E3 2018 is wrapping up, and every year, we like to give you a look at the show floor with some stuff you may not have been able to see otherwise. Not everyone can get in, so we try to give you a look at some cool shit. Well, here's 10 things from the E3 show floor that we want to show you. Let's get started off with number 10. Now, one of my favorite announcements at E3 was the Resident Evil 2 remake. Look, I'm sure you've heard me go off before about how Resident Evil 2 is one of my childhood favorites, so this one is pretty big for me. Capcom went all out on their show floor presence here. They have a Raccoon City Police Department car set up with a real life zombie hanging out and you can take pictures and stuff. They also have a really creepy haunted house-like thing that you have to go through before you actually get to play the game. Capcom did a similar thing for Resident Evil 7 when that was announced, bringing the whole house right to the show floor, but this one felt like a full haunted house with like flashing lights, a little bit of smoke, and of course, zombies shuffling around and stuff. Now, my footage is kind of crappy, sorry, but it was cool and we wanted to show it to you guys. Because next at number 9, this year at E3, Epic went all out with their Fortnite booth, and it shows that whether you like it or not, the game isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now, the minute you walk up to the booth, there's this giant Fortnite sign above the battle bus, which is like a real bus deck out to look like the one from the game they literally recreated the battle bus it seems like the booth was perfect for a fortnite fan I, I don't know they had a really small stage in front of the battle bus that was made to look like the dance floors from the games and fans could go mess around there uh, there was a rideable mechanical llama from the game and they had people dressed up as bushes that would hide and pop up and small little loot crates hanging from balloons which was a small but nice touch fans could get, also get their pictures taken flying in on a glider of your choice they also obviously had the game there for fans to play if that's what you wanted to do. And honestly, it just felt like a little Fortnite amusement park, and I'm okay with that. It was cool. Now, next at number eight, I, I think this was definitely a good year for Ubisoft. They showed off a lot of good stuff that fans really seemed to be into, and it seemed like they were really into the booth as well. Besides demo stations where you could play games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the Division 2 and stuff, there were a few things that were cool that were set up for photo ops. There's a replica oval office set up for the Division 2 where you can actually sit down in the president's chair and take a picture. There's a cool Spartan statue for Assassin's Creed Odyssey that you can pose with, and I went back a second time because there was actually someone fully decked out in Spartan gear walking around you could hang out with them for a second then there was also a starlink photo hop too unfortunately though there wasn't anything for siege and we're big fans of that we were hoping to like snag a photo with lord tachanka but unfortunately he and the other operators were nowhere to be found but next at number seven, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had a big presence here. And the booth is one of the first things you see when you walk in, like big, huge letters, and the logo really stands out. They erected all this stuff that makes it look like a temple tomb from the game with old ruins covered in vines and foliage and some cool lighting once you step inside. There was also a display case that shows off Lara's weapons like the bow, her guns, and a pickaxe. Uh, there was also a really convincing Lara Croft cosplayer too, you know, rocking all the gear and the dirtiness, and there was some good photo op opportunities. Also, next to Smash, it was definitely one of the longest lines in the whole damn place, and that's worth mentioning. Now, next at number six, probably one of the sadder things at E3, not really one of the coolest things, had to be this memorial for Cade 6 from Destiny. If you saw the new trailer for the Forsaken expansion, you know that Cade 6 and his ghost was shot down and killed by Prince Aldrin. It's actually kind of sad, and the trailer opens up with a beaten down Cade 6, and then the camera pans to Prince Aldrin, and then he shoots him down, and then it pans back to Cade's lifeless body. Uh, the, the day after the trailer aired, someone actually built this shrine to Cade in front of the convention center. Uh, we weren't sure if it was Bungie or Fan that built it but nobody really seems to know but it was really cool to see it was only up for a short time until it was taken down maybe somebody just wanted all that stuff or maybe the city cleaned it up because it was technically litter I don't know but we should have a moment of silence for Kate 6 now next at number five, the Nintendo footprint was bigger than ever this year. It stretched so far back and was filled with screens and stuff going on for the Smash tournament and stuff, but what really caught our eye was the large scale replicas they had behind display cases. Most notably, they had a Splatoon 2 weapon, and me personally, as a huge JRPG fan, I was pumped to see the Monado, that's Shulk's main weapon from Xenoblade Chronicles. Look at that thing. There was also Captain Falcon's helmet, a big Donkey Kong tie, King Dedede's hammer, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, these were definitely my favorites and it was a cool display for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Now at number four, Bethesda always goes overboard with their booth. Last year, they had an old 60s style diner for Wolfenstein. This year, there's a rundown bus for Rage 2 and even a small replica of Vault 76 with the actual vault dwellers walking around. Uh, but the coolest thing is this giant doom demon that smack dab in the middle of their booth. This dude is big and very intimidating. We got a quick announcement for Doom Eternal, but sadly we were told we weren't going to see more of it until QuakeCon this year. But it was really cool to see Hell on Earth and see the Doom Slayer 
Slayer rocking the old school short sleeved armor that he had in the older games. I like that. Like I said before, Bethesda always has really cool boots. And this Doom Demon was one of the coolest statue things we saw this year. They also had their glass VR booths again, like a fish tank style thing where you could watch people just being awkward and goofy while playing stuff in VR, which we always like to see. Now at number three, over at the Xbox booth, it's almost like a yearly tradition at this point, but this year it was especially awesome. For Forza Horizon 4, they had the actual car that's gracing the cover of the upcoming game. It's a McLaren Senna and it looks badass. It has a hell of a presence and you can't not stop and look at this thing. Plus, I don't know tons about cars, but I googled it and the 2018 edition costs usually around a million dollars. So there's that. Now coming down to number two, there was a surprising amount of Jurassic Park at E3 2018. There were two real world Jurassic Park Jeep replicas and I'm always a sucker for those as a big fan. Any anywhere I go, if I see one, I have to take a picture. Not only that, they had the cool Jurassic Park gate and it looked pretty legit. I, I was almost cooler than the theme park variety. One, for reference, I guess, if you know. It was just funny to see so much Jurassic Park because during E3, Jurassic World Evolution released in the midst of all the chaos. Now, we haven't played it yet since we've been here, but I'm curious to see how it is as a fan because reviews have been all over the place, but who knows. Now down to number one, it was the year of zombies at E3. There were a lot of zombies walking around for all different games, like Dying Light 2, Resident Evil 2, Overkill's Walking Dead. These zombies let loose were just easy ways to promote the game. But Resident Evil 2 and Dying Light's zombies looked great, but there was just something really terrifying about Overkill's zombies. Upon first seeing them, you might think almost like it's like a homeless person or a dirty dude that wandered into E3, but then they turn around and you see they're all bloody and gross and mangled, and actually shocking because they look that good. These actors are really incredible. As soon as you walk near them, they start to head right at you, like trying to like bite you. It was really cool. Hell, even behind closed doors for the demo, they were in there keeping up the charade, unlike the Dying Light 2 zombie who I saw sitting down for a slice of pizza, which that was honestly one of my favorite moments. But hey, that was what we saw at the show floor, E3 2018. I'm actually recording this in the middle of E3, so apologies for the sound issues. But maybe if you were lucky enough to go, we want to know what you saw out there, what you liked. Maybe one day you're looking to go, what would you like to see at E3 on the show floor? We're having a ton of fun, we're still putting out more videos, but we're curious to see what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video though, clicking the like button does help us out, we really do appreciate it. And if you're new, you should consider subscribing because we put out stuff like this all the time. But as always, thanks for watching, we'll see you guys next time.